Hello guys, welcome aboard the TBM 930 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, we're going to be flying this from Blackpool here today in live weather. As you can see, it's a bit grey and miserable, surprise, surprise. All the way to Donegal in Northern Ireland, which is a handcrafted airport. Now, just to say, I've already done this flight and edited it together, put it on YouTube and then deleted it. In the CJ4, that is a Citation Cessna business jet. Unfortunately, there's quite a lot of issues with it at the moment. The autopilot system is pretty bugged. And in the end, I decided to basically scrap the whole video and try again in the TBM. Now, I'm quite familiar with this aircraft, particularly the TBM 900, because as I'm sure many of you have seen already on the channel, I fly that thing all the time in X-Plane. But that particular version is a payware $60 add-on and it's oh, so it's simulated to every degree um, in terms of its persistency of the engine uh, the way you have to look after the aircraft and the behavior of it is second to none so it'll be very interesting to see what this particular stock version of the TBM behaves like in this new sim so welcome aboard as I say and we're gonna start this thing up move the crash bar to the upward position and put the battery on feels quite surreal being in this uh, aircraft. I've got hundreds and hundreds of hours flying this thing in X-Plane and I'm just going to you know fly it exactly the same apart from of course this is slightly different it's a bit more fancy with its G3000 avionics suite and this sort of very nice touchscreen interface here in fact our nav source needs to be FMS I'll just do that now while I remember so our parking brake is set we need to put our ignitions to on and our auxiliary, auxiliary fuel pump to on. Listen to that whirring, that's very realistic. I will engage the starter for two seconds. Here we go, come down here. Check that our NG is starting to rise and our ITT. Make sure there's no hot, uh, hot starts or hung starts, although I don't think this particular model will simulate those particular characteristics. I won't expect it to really for a default. I think some people are expecting too much from these uh, default planes. Right, so that's just, it's topping out there so we need to engage high, uh, sorry, low idle. So let's try that now. Whoa, there we go. That does sound very, very similar. In fact, to be fair, the sounds in this thing are as good as the payware hot start version of this aircraft honestly right we're all in the green there so we can now go over the gate and introduce go to high idle there we go beautiful we'll engage the inertial separator so we don't ingest anything into that engine at this point we can uh, put the generator on auxiliary pump can go to auto so can the ignitions and then we put our AP trims on and our fuel selector switch to auto and we should have put our taxi light on but we can do that now nav we need a bit of panel lighting here actually simply because it's a bit dark right okay so with that being done we're not going to put our pito heat on until we enter the runway bleed air needs to come on next which is over here, it's in a different place to the 900 version. Our flight plan today is basically just going to go direct actually, so it should be pretty easy. So we'll contact ATIS. Black Gold Airport Information, Quebec 1300 Zulu. Line 2 Niner Tree at 1 4. Visibility 6 in heavy rain. Sky condition 6 in heavy rain. It's beautiful uh, rain effects there. Two point one zero. Altimeter two niner decimal niner four. Two nine four. Two eight. Two eight. Our heading book to that. Oh, come to start. So we have Quebec. We've got our. We've got our uh, altimeter set. We'll contact uh, 
Ground for our Tower IFR Sierra, clearance. Sierra, X-ray Golf Sierra Alpha IFR to Donegal ready to copy. Dagger Alpha Sierra X-ray Golf Sierra Alpha is cleared to Donegal Airport as filed. Take off runway 28 climb and maintain 12,000 feet. Departure frequency is 118.775. 12,000 feet. Roger that. Ooh. Sorry about that, guys. Just trying to uh, scroll that to get our altitude pre-selected there. We better just uh, acknowledge Dear that. Alpha Sierra, X-ray Golf Sierra Alpha cleared to Donegal Airport as filed. Take off runway 28, climb and maintain 12,000 feet. Departure on 118.775. Squawk <laughs> 6231. Do you know one thing, guys? Alpha I'll just let correct. them talk first. One thing, I don't know if anyone's noticed this, but when you talk, your pilot, you can hear yourself in the headset, but you can also hear, like, the voice as if you're talking now. Um, how to explain it, really? Like, at the moment, I know that I'm talking. I can hear myself in the microphone, but I can also hear myself anyway. And it's that sort of sound that you can hear. So you can hear both yourself in the headphones and sort of with your own ears. That's a really nice touch there by Sabo. And, you know, those nice touches are all throughout this sim, to be honest. Yesterday I sat at Skegness Airfield for about an hour and watched the uh, sort of frontal systems roll in and out. And I just literally just sat there watching it and it was just magnificent. Really, really cool. Anyway, let's get our taxi Last clearance and get out of here. I can break. Alpha Sierra, X-ray Golf Sierra, Alpha Taxi to Enhold, short of runway 28 via taxiway Charlie. Contact tower on 19 decimal 9 when ready. Oh, I'm going to go right over the uh, the Marshall guy there. Sorry about that. <laughs> taxi to I could have got a pushback, but I couldn't be bothered. Taxiway Charlie Dayer, Golf Sierra, Alpha. Now, during this flight, I'm also going to show you how to customise your views. I might also put that in a separate video at some point, but Beans were doing it here, and I'm new to the TBM in Microsoft Flight Sim. I might show you that. Sounds are very nice indeed, gotta say. Okay, we'll just hold short here. Make sure everything is set, which it isn't yet. We need to put our pitot heat on now at this point and set our landing light on. Strobe. All good. Contact tower and get our takeoff Black clearance. Black Tower Dayer, Alpha Sierra, X-ray Golf Sierra, Alpha and runway 28 ready for takeoff IFR to Donegal. Air Alpha Sierra, X-ray Golf Sierra, Alpha cleared for takeoff on way to it. Roger that, we are clear for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff runway 28 day Air Alpha Sierra, X-ray Golf Sierra, Alpha. Love how when you uh, when the prop pitch changes and you give it some power that the the rain effects move along the canopy quicker and they're sort of washed over. The windscreen, if that makes sense. So we're just going to backtrack here on the runway. Some very heavy cloud around here, but it does create a wonderful scene. Okay, we'll just line up here. Look at that sky, my goodness me, we're going to be heading straight into that. And we are ready to take off, so we'll set power see how this thing flies. Takeoff power is set. Try and maintain centre line. Wowee, the sounds of this thing are beautiful. And here we go. 
Oh, that was... Didn't have my trims set quite right there, but that's fine. Got a lot of uh, turbulence as well. Oh, this is beautiful. With this cloud. Okay, what we'll do is set, put the autopilot on, FLC mode, nav mode, and contact, contact, in fact not yet, wait for them to uh, hand us over, look at that beautiful water there, have a quick look outside, wow, that is gorgeous. Can't beat the weather effects in this sim, that's for sure. Now I thought I put FLC on, but I clearly didn't. There we go. So we're going to climb at a sprightly 197 knots. And what it will do is it will pitch for that as we head up to 12,000 feet. And so far it's working really well. Now not all of the aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator work <laughs> in terms of their autopilot system. The Cessna 172 doesn't and neither does the Cessna Citation. Whether it's a Cessna thing I don't know. But uh, we're right in the drink here now so I might actually put a little bit of icing on here because that is modelled very well in this sim. You, you don't want to be caught out. It's nice to have the synthetic vision I've got to say. And the G1000 display is very nice. Sorry, G3000. Looking forward to breaking out of this cloud. Nice steady climb up here, about 1700 feet per minute. Now once we get out of this cloud, I'm going to take off the inertial separator and let's see, because in the real aircraft, if you do that, the torque will then rise because there's more air going into the engine. It'll be really interesting to see if they've simulated that. If they have, I'll be very impressed. Because remember guys, this is a default aircraft and quite honestly, right now, I'm very impressed with this. If I would have bought this as even a payware sort of add-on, say for like 30, 40 pounds, I would be quite happy. I think the TBM is definitely one of the better aircraft in the flight sim. So we'll come down here, check out this nifty display. In fact, we'll take our range out a little bit here. See, we're doing a departure, head to Pennell, and then we're going to make a right turn. I was hoping to see a bit of the Isle of Man, but I don't think we're going to be able to see that with such heavy cloud. Oh, it looks like we're breaking through here. Very nice indeed. Now, what I'll do is, I'm going to now uh, sort of show you some footage of this very flight, but flying the CJ4, because the weather was absolutely spectacular on that flight. Unfortunately, I did scrap the video due to the issues with the aircraft but I'll just put some uh, sort of footage in now of that departure because it really was spectacular.
So there we are, I hope you enjoyed that footage. Unfortunately the aircraft is a little bit bugged at the moment, but I'm sure it'll be sorted out eventually. But one thing that I really enjoy actually, even with these sort of longer flights, when you're up above the cloud, before in X-Plane 11 or even in other sims, after a while you get a bit bored because you're just seeing that same flat sort of 2D sort of pancake looking cloud. But here, the clouds are as interesting to watch and look at as the scenery below. I mean, everything is constantly changing and it, you'll never see the same cloud formation twice because it's all sort of shader technology and it's all it's just dissipating and forming very naturally. Like, look at this here. That's incredible. I know we're getting a little bit of shimmering there, but uh, I mean, the overall effect is just really, really very, very convincing. So any minute now, we're going to be turning right. We're nearly at our cruise altitude now. And what we're going to do, guys, is take off the inertial separator. In fact, we'll take the icing off as well. We don't need that now. So let's see what happens when we disable the inertial separator. Check that torque. Oh, wow. Look at that. It actually is rising. Well, that, that is impressive. For a default aircraft to simulate that is impressive. I'm having to take it back now and watch that torque because it is rising on its own due to the increased air that's being fed into the engine. If I leave it to its own devices, it's going to go red. Look, any minute. There we are. And we don't want that to happen. I don't really know if it simulates sort of over torque in the aircraft. I don't know if you get an engine failure or not, but I'll check that out in another, another video. But for now, we need to just uh, keep keep an eye on that torque because it's uh, definitely making a difference. Well done Asebo for that attention to detail. Now I have actually been um, sort of uh, purposely avoiding the TBM simply because I'm so in love with the hot start version in X-Plane. But I've got to say guys, so far I'm not disappointed at all. This feels really, really nice. Of course, it's not going to be quite as in-depth, but it's not bad at all. I can't believe this is a stock aircraft. Very, very, very impressed. Now, if we just go to our VFR map quickly, you'll see that Isle of, the Isle of Man is coming up. And if this uh, cloud continues to sort of dissipate, we might actually get a decent view. This is a very nice place to be, I've got to say. Let's have a look at this uh, PFD down here as well. So we've got quite a number of options. This actually is modeled very well. We've got the weather radar here. That's interesting, look at that. Okay, so we've got next rad settings. Ah, okay, very cool. I was wondering if that was modelled, and it is. So we've got a weather radar doing its thing. We'll keep that on actually. Flight, pa uh, flight plan page here. Oh, I don't want to do that actually, cancel that. So this is fully working. So there's quite a, a number of aircraft that have got sort of systems that are in op, as they call them, which don't work at the moment, but it seems like this is okay. Map setting here. That's very cool. So we'll just keep it on weather radar for now, I think. And over here, we've got our flight plan here. We can adjust the range of that. Sensors, that doesn't work. Uh, traffic, not sure if that's doing anything. So in terms of the systems, even the hot start version of this aircraft is based upon the default X-Plane, but it has been heavily changed. But I've got to say, this just looks and feels very similar. So 
it's going to be very interesting to see what uh, sort of level of detail we're going to get from payware developers because out of the box this is really already very good now while I'm here I'm going to show you how to customize a couple of views very very easy to do actually and quite intuitive let's say for instance we want a view of the sort of touch screen interface down here that's a nice view there so we'll just basically all you need to do is press Control alt and in this case uh, basically any number that you want to assign it to on your keyboard so I'm gonna click number two and that has saved that now and I've already got one for one so if I press alt and one that is my default view there that I like and if I want to check the uh, touchscreen system press alt and two and that goes straight down to there that's very cool and we'll have another one as well uh, let's have a really zoomed in look at the G3000 here and the engine so we've got all the, that information there we'll put that to control alt and three so now we have one oh, hang on, sorry one two and three and then back to one again that's really cool and very sort of chase plane-esque I like that and that's all within the flight sim itself right let's have a look we're about to pass the Isle of Man so we'll check outside to see if we can get a bit of a glimpse noticing, noticing actually in fact here it is there we're getting a bit of cloud here and that's indicative of what we can see on the display there and that red there indicates that we've got some heavy rain brilliant that's fantastic so there you are you've got a fully working weather radar in this aircraft and that is the Isle of Man over there which I've never been to would you believe need to sort that out well, as we're getting closer that red blob is becoming a rather big red blob so I'm getting a bit concerned about that actually that, that's looking pretty bad isn't it looks like we might hit it around there so we'll have to keep an eye out for that and see what the weather's doing ahead and that's what another great thing about this sim is that you'll see the weather building ahead if, if it's going to be a storm we'll see it and actually, as I say that, I can see here that it's a building cloud. That might be a bit of a problem. Hopefully, we'll keep an eye out for that as we motor along here. Wow, look at that over there. That looks like real localised rain over the mountains there. have a look at this wind in fact have we even got it set up I don't think we have so we'll come down in fact what am I doing I don't need to do that I've set a view alt 2 there we go we'll go to our uh, PFD and then select settings and wind we'll go for option 2 see what that gives us there we go so we've got a 23 knot headwind at the moment that's not too bad now I don't know if any of you remember but Christmas last year I did a ferry flight all within the HP reverb in VR uh, in X-Plane 11 from the UK to Renton in the US with the intention of flying the default TBM back to the UK now we'll be flying in real weather across Iceland and Greenland, Canada um, and I'm really excited to start bringing that series to you very soon. So let me know if you're interested in seeing that on the channel. I can either video it or do it uh, sort of on my own and let you know how I get on because as I say I do fly a lot as well without doing videos because I think it's very important to just enjoy the sim without worrying about editing. 
because it can be a pain sometimes. But yeah, I really am looking forward to bringing a brand new TBM 930 back home to the UK over Iceland. And that's just going to be incredible. All with that inc superb ortho that you get at this sim. So here we go then. We're going to be heading over this cloud. And what, let's look at our ETA here. Well, 2 minutes and 32 to our next waypoint. 31 miles. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just go back to the map view here. So, yeah, we're about two minutes away from Slider, I'm going to call it, and then it's Ringer. Which will put us nicely on course across Northern Ireland there and into Donegal, which I say is a handcrafted airport. back to the weather view there, I really like that. I guess we can adjust the level of Generic range. Can't get enough of these beautiful volumetric clouds. So as I say, I hope you've enjoyed my sort of Microsoft Flight Sim content. I know I've been literally hammering it this last week. In fact, I think I've posted a video, at least one or two videos every day for the past week. But let me know if you'd like to see some more VR content in X-Plane, DCS, IL-2. I'm more than happy to uh, start producing more content. But I've got to say, it's very hard to go back to X-Plane now that I've experienced this. And I'm quite happy, really, to use this without VR for the coming, for a month or so. Hopefully, you know, waiting for that VR. Because I think that way, I'm going to get, by the time VR gets here, I'm going to be really, I'm going to feel a lot more comfortable with the sim anyway. So, uh, this is almost like my training, if you like, before VR hits. <laughs> and the sim is just too damn good for me personally to wait for VR but any of you guys who are waiting for VR I completely respect that decision and I'm actually quite impressed that you're able to wait for me personally this is just too good too good I've got to have it and experience it and I'm absolutely loving flying in this sim it's the best sim out there for me personally if I had to pick between them which I don't see the point you know just use both of them Use all of them, whatever, but if, if you had to pick a GA sim, it's Microsoft Flight Simulator. Without a doubt, it's the king. It's the new benchmark. checking for any icing conditions we should be okay at the moment but I must admit that uh, cloud is building and overhead there in front of us that looks like it's higher than us so we may have to go around that um, because I'd imagine there's gonna be a fair amount of icing in these clouds and in fact when I flew in the CJ4 I got clumps of ice all over the wing and all over the windshield which is like, just amazing and just exactly how it is in real life I remember when I flew in a real Hawker 900 XP and we went through a cloud layer and instantly we got ice all over the wing. So it, honestly it can happen that quick guys. And one of the dogs is now... <laughs> one of my dogs has got completely caught up in my headphone cable. What are you doing? <laughs> oh this is just epic, epic, epic.
little bit concerned <laughs> about uh, pressure just changed slightly. A little bit concerned about getting through this cloud though. So when we do descend, I think what we'll do is we'll put the inertial separator on first, providing we're slow enough, and then we'll uh, try and descend pretty sharply through the cloud layer here. Oh, just look at it. Just imagine now, guys, soaring through that in VR. Oh my god. It's going to be very special indeed. Do you see what I mean, guys? Like, literally, I can just sit here and watch all of that cloud go by, and we got a beautiful view here coming up of the scenery and I'm always so amazed with how well it just kind of streams all of this high quality ortho and that they could have quite easily got away with a lower resolution it still would have been amazing for the entire world but it's at least zoom level 17 18 out of the box and the other day I was looking at the clouds screenshot and I could see a little like a rabbit <laughs> <laughs> you know when you were a kid and you'd look at the uh, if I still do that now, you know, look at the sky and you'd go, hang on, that looks like this, that and the other you can actually do that in the sim because all of the shapes and models of these clouds are all real time and being affected by the prevailing wind who would have thought we'd have had a sim like this in 2020 it's come at a good time guys I think bit of a stutter there it's come at a good time simply because the world at the moment is going through a crappy time with the Covid situation so I do feel that this is a, a very nice gift that we can sort of enjoy flying all over the world really even if you can't in real life you can experience it in the sim and when VR hits oh it's going to be the ultimate guys really That is just, yeah, pretty damn special. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, don't know if you can hear that guys, but my dog is going crazy because he's not happy. He's in the back, he's bored, so I will pick this up guys on approach. See you in a minute. See, see you in a moment. <laughs> about to go through this cloud layer here and I'm a bit nervous I'd never feel like this in any other sim this is exactly how I'd feel in real life I'm thinking is that cloud okay are we going to get any icing because I haven't got any icing on at the moment oh my god these views oh crap yeah look we're getting icing straight away that is unbelievable that is a lot of icing Yeah, that's uh, that's what I was worried about. Windshield de-icing. Let's see if we... Yeah, I can see it melting. Look at that! Oh my god, it's a thing of beauty, this thing. Let's have a look outside here. Got some ice. You can see bits of icing along here, look along there now that's again another thing that the hot start TBM brought to the table in X-Plane was full icing and uh, you know simulation which was like groundbreaking but hey got it in the stock, stock sim and I'm actually now going to have to think about going round this here now I don't think you can do that particularly can't you know ask to go around any storms or anything or go around slightly but yeah we're gonna have to um, be pretty quick about this actually so let's go to the left a little bit here this is the first time guys I've ever done this in a flight sim have to change course because of the weather that is mind blown
it looks just like a wall of cloud. Just a wall of sheer terror. <laughs> and that's what it feels like. I'm sure many of you who have flown for real. I've been very lucky to do a fair bit of flying really, considering I'm not actually a PPL holder, but I had done a fair bit of flying in these sorts of conditions and uh, it is, it, it brings it all back to you. Sort of that feeling of looking at that cloud and thinking, is that okay to go through? And it just looks like a sheer wall that you need to sort of penetrate. And it's, it, yeah, it gets you nervous. I know I keep saying this guys, but what's this gonna be like in VR? For me personally, I'm gonna say it on this video. I don't really like to go into this too much, but once this has VR, X-Plane 11 is done for. Absolutely done for, for me. Even if I just had to use the default planes, which isn't gonna happen anyway. There's gonna be plenty of add-ons coming, including the A2A. Uh, aircraft, I can't remember what it's called, coming very soon. But even if I had to just use the TBM and the default aircraft, it's still a better experience for me personally than all of my add-ons in X-Plane once VR is implemented. Now, feel free to disagree with me, I'm totally fine with that. But I'm just voicing my opinion, guys. This is what I think personally. Because it's just absolutely groundbreaking. I don't know how they're going to compete with this. I really don't but they're going to have to. And that is all good news for me and you in the future. Okay, we now need to descend 2,000 feet. This is when things are going to get interesting. So what I'm going to do, pull the torque back, get 2,000 feet dialed in here, and we're going to VS it 2,000 feet, that 2,200 feet. Stick all of the uh, icing on. I don't know if this is going to be enough, guys. This might end in disaster yet. And we're going to put the inertial separator on. Now, I think in the real aircraft, you have to be below 200 knots, I think it is. But uh, I reckon we'll get away with it with this stock aircraft. In fact, you can get away with that even in the hot start, the TBM, to be fair. I don't want to get too slow either. I want to descend as quick as possible. Let's see what our weather radar is telling us as well. Oh my god. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have done that. That's completely red. But this cloud doesn't look so angry as, as the other cloud, but we'll see. This is the best place to, to descend, really. Okay, our inertial separator is now on. And we're about to descend into this cloud. Don't know how thick it is either. We're going to find out though. I think this is probably the best area to descend. This cloud just definitely doesn't look as bad as back there, and we're actually descending quite low now. As long as we don't uh, go into some of this sort of cumulus cloud and building storms. It's a little bit black over here though. I'd never ever think like this before in a flight sim. Here we go. Hold your breath guys. Will do. I keep thinking he's saying King Air. I think say Daya. I do need to change my uh, Shannon Center, Daya, Alpha, sort of Sierra, Golf, handle Sierra, name. Alpha, let's be careful as well with the Sierra, mountains. Oh, we're going to let, let up on that descent now, I think. Yeah, we're doing okay. In fact, I can just see a bit of the ground now coming. Oh, that looks quite close to me. Okay, we'll 
we'll keep an eye out. Now in the real world there'll be a minimum descent altitude in this area that you'd be looking at charts for, so uh, but we don't have that today, unfortunately. We're nearly at 2,000 feet now and I can just start to see the ground coming into view. We are pretty close. So we don't want to go any further than that really. That's it, pull up. Autopilot doing a really good job actually. And there we go. We can now increase the speed a bit. We're going to keep the inertial separator on, definitely, because that also helps in cloud and icing conditions. We're going to keep all of our icing stuff on. The outside temperature is... Well, 11 degrees, which actually sounds quite warm, so we shall see. And we're about five minutes away, so I'm looking forward to seeing Donegal once again. As I say, I've already done this flight once in the CJ4, but I just didn't think it was worth your time, considering that aircraft is a bit broken at the moment. But the TBM, big thumbs up, guys. Really like this aircraft. There's the airfield. And that is a handcrafted airfield, looking very nice actually. Look at that, wow. That's gorgeous. Oh, hang on, looks like visibility is kind of getting a bit better. Or is it? I'm oh, just being too optimistic. There it is. If not, I think we've got just enough visibility to... Uh, look at that, can you see how the visibility is now just hugely improved? And how it was so dynamic the way it did it. No more weather refreshes. God, I hated that. Look at this for a view here. Oh, wow. That is very nice. Okay, well I'm actually going to go right base here, but that's fine. You can see there, that's where we've just come from. And that's where all the bad visibility is. And we're heading that way again now. Slow down a bit. Let's see if we can get this aircraft in. I'd to get some sort of visual on the... Uh, on the airfield, if I can. I'm not sure if we've got, as I say, the ILS dialed in, or even it has an ILS. Should have planned for this, really. Flaps and gear coming down. Air Golf Sierra Alpha cleared to land runway 21. Wind Thank you very much. Five. Cleared to land runway 21 day Air Golf Sierra Alpha. Don't have a visual yet. Is that it over there? No, that's not it either. Alright, we'll adjust our nav source to VOR in case we need. Actually, yeah, I've just spotted the airfield. There it is, there, okay. Looks like we're going to make it guys, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Second stage of flaps. Beautiful views. 11 knots on the nose at the moment. But I think it might be 15 knots, I think it's there, the ATC. What a pleasant flight this has been. there. Just setting trim. Keep 
I think around 104 knots or so. I'd like to know what Steve-O makes of this TBM. If you don't know who he is, he's a YouTuber that flies a TBM in real life. I think he was going to uh, post some videos of this new sim when it's released, so you check out his channel. He needs a he needs a support. He hasn't got that many subscribers. Haha, <laughs> no joking. All right, so here we go. Just relieved to see the runway, to be honest. Ninety-five knots. Feels very much like the Hot Start TBM. Especially the flight model feels good. Floating a little bit here. Bit of a bounce, but that's fine. Go on centre line. Don't think we're going to need reverse actually. Dab a break, 60 knots. Should do it. And there we are, guys. Welcome to Donegal. Probably pronounced wrong. In Northern Ireland. What we'll do is we'll get the drone up to have a look at this airfield once we uh, park up. God, I love this sim. Have I mentioned that yet? I'm not sure if I have. <laughs> what a charming little airfield this is. I don't really know if this is available in the standard or the deluxe mod, uh, model, deluxe versions, but I'll have to check it out. But I must admit, a lot of these airfields are very, very nicely done. That marshal is looking completely gone out because I've gone, gone for a different parking spot, but never mind. <laughs> this should do nicely. Parking brake set. Quite sure it said why it's done that. <laughs> that's that's a bug. Should have taken the icing off when we landed. Peter Heat come off. Initial separator. We'll shut down. I don't usually actually shut down on YouTube. I usually leave that bit, but I'll I'll do it properly. Or ish. Okay, so we need to pull that over. There we go. Feather mode and then down. That's the flaps, whoops, there we go. <laughs> and then, no, not that way, it's a bit tricky. Let's get used to it, there we go. Oh, listen to that. Sounds are glorious in this thing. And it does beep as much as that as well. I may not have done that in the right order, but it's about it really. I got my bleed air. No, I, I haven't done that right. But never mind. All right, let's have a quick look outside. Now you hear those beautiful sound effects of the birds and the things tweeting. In X Plane, you'd have had to buy a separate add-on just to have those atmospheric sounds. And this is my point about this sim. This is all built in. Really, really wonderful stuff. All right, let's get the drone and have a quick check around here. So this is one of the in-house sort of uh, airfields. Quite random how they've picked this particular airfield, but I guess it depends on what sort of uh, data they have. Very charming little place, this. Definitely worth a visit, guys, if you've got it. Guess that's the main entrance here. Dun Nagal. So yeah, I guess I have been pronouncing it wrong the whole time, but uh, apologies for any Irish viewers on the channel. <laughs> nice brickwork there. Very high quality, actually. I was about to say it blends into the surrounding ortho, but of course it does because it's all one seamless landscape, isn't it? That's beautiful. 
just get the drone speed up a bit so we can have a look at uh, sort of the surrounding area. There we go. I'm just checking out those rocks. They look customised. Oh, listen to that, guys. You can even hear the sea and the crashing on the... Oh, that's just so nice. I think I might just sit here, actually, for a minute and just chill out. Imagine doing this in VR, guys. Just, just sat on these rocks now. Relaxing. Watching the world go by. Maybe do a spot of fishing. That is just wonderful. Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining in. It's been a bit of a long video, this one. But I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now. Take care.